in this demo, we will create an OAuth server using Spring Authorization Server Framework. We will create a Spring Boot Resource Server. We will issue a JWT access token using grant type client credentials. We will act, validate the access token via resource server. We'll use two different mechanisms, one using the Jocks UR and another one using token introspection. Following both APIs uh, are covered in this demo. One both to token, this is to issue the token. We will look at Jocks URI. We will look at the token introspection and we will look at token revocation. Now we will use Postman collection. We can see the request and response for each of these endpoints. We also look at Spring implementation and HTTP wire logs. An example for both grant type client credentials. In this example, we will be using a self-contained token or JWT token. Let's look at the players involved in this uh, for this demo. We have a client. We have a resource server which contains protected resource, and we have an OAuth server. Typically, for the client credentials grant, the client is a machine, typically a confidential client. This is because client needs to be registered to the OAuth server. And when they register, they typically get a client ID and client secret. You cannot use that client secret from a browser application because then the credentials could be compromised and the resource access could be available for anyone. So this generally means the client is a backend server or a, some sort of trusted machine. Now, to, in order to request the protected resource, client need to first get a, an access token. For that, it passes a client ID and client secret to the OAuth server. And the response contains an access token. In this case, a self-contained JOT token. Now, once you have the token, the client requests the resource. The resource server first look at the JWT token check the key ID and see if the key ID already exists in the cache. If the key ID does not exist in the cache, it makes a call to the OAuth server uh, via the jokes URL and retrieve all the public keys and the corresponding key IDs. Typically, resource server caches this information. Once it's cached, it actually retrieve the public key from the list of key ID keys. Uh, and then use that key to validate the integrity of the, of the token. If the resource server is satisfied that the token is valid and the client has sufficient privilege to access, then the protected resource will be returned to the client. Now let's get into the demo. Oh, for this example, we need an OAuth server. Let's start the OAuth microservice. We also need a resource server. In this case, it's a system microservice. So let's start both of them. We also use Postman as a client in for this example, so we can uh, clearly see what is cool. So before, let's. Try a simple example where we try to access the resource without passing a client token. Uh, as you expect, you are getting HTTP 401 unauthorized. Now let's get back and see whether the server is up. Let's look at the actuated server endpoint. Yeah, both server is running. We also need to check if the resource server system server is running. Yes, it's running as well. So first, let's retrieve a client token. Now for that, you need to pass, send a request to the OAuth token endpoint, uh, to the OAuth server. 
you need to we don't want the private key job we want the client secret post okay so we know uh, in order to do that we need to send a request to the auth token endpoint pass the client id and client secret and the scope we are interested in this case so let's send this that request <coughs> we received an access token back let's look at the access token Yeah, as you can see, the issuer is localhost, our old server running in port 8085. And remember the key IDs starting with IB6. And the algorithm used for signing the JOT is RS256. Now, let's get back to Postman and try to request the resource. Let's clear the so we can see what the interactions happening at the resource server. Send a request. We got a HTTP 200 back. Now let's look at the system console. As you can see, first we received a request, and then we have a call to the jokes uh, to retrieve the public keys because at this point this is the first call to the system application with that key ID. And then it validated, made sure that everything is fine, and then send a HTTP 200 once satisfied that token is valid. Now let's clear this console and send the request again. And let's look at the logs again. So as you can see, the request is here again, and he, uh, as you can see, there is no call to the jokes URI. As we discussed in the beginning, once it is cached the resource server need not go to the auth server so this is very important after first time once we retrieve and cache the public keys basically you don't need the auth server anymore because the token is self-sufficient the client can validate using the public key that it's valid and then they can send the protected resource. Now let me clear this. Let me get a new token. So this time uh, again, so it's ending with VL4W and let's send that request again. As you can see, even though it's a new token again, the resource server did not go to the auth server because the key ID is already cached here. So that's uh, really a plus point of self-contained token. The uh, auth server is called only once by the resource server to get the public key and from there on there is no other call. Now let's look at postman and let's make the call to token introspect as you can see token introspect returned that the token is an active token scope and other information is already there now let's revoke this token to revoke this token you make a call to the auth server's revoke endpoint send that we received a 200 after revocation let's introspect the token again now the token is not active anymore let's clear the console it's clear now let's request the resource using the revoked token as you can imagine you still got success because the resource server is not going to go back to the old server to check whether the token is still is revoked or still valid or not all it checks is whether the tokens is expired not expired and it has sufficient claims and this is very important because in the case of JOT token revoke the resource server will still respect that token now this can be a problem in some cases we can it is completely up to the resource server to decide whether this is acceptable so let's go to the code again let's go to the resource servers configuration 
as you can see in the security filter chain we have specified that the token is an O token so instead this time we will change it to a opaque token so that means we are telling the resource server that the token what is going to come is an opaque token and we have provided the introspection URI to, to the introspect. Now let's start the system again. Let's clear that. Let's request the resource using the previous token. Now we've got 401 unauthorized. Let's look at what happened in the dog. So as you can see, now the resource server made a call to the OAuth introspect endpoint and the introspect endpoint responded with the 200 OK but the respond message contained that token is invalid. So we have an error, token provided is not active and that resulted in sending a 401. Now let's get a fresh token. Uh, let's introspect that token. Yes, it's an active token now. Now let's make a call to the resource server again. This time we got a success. Let's have a look. And you can see that there was an introspect call. Introspect succeeded. And we sent an HTTP resource. We will, let's try again. As you can see, every single API call to the resource server is making a call to the auth server's introspect and only if the token is valid it's going to let the resources pass. Now this is good in some cases if you expect that the token could be revoked and if it completely comes down to the design the downside of this is that Every single API call to the resource server will result in a call to the auth server as well.